Cardinal Coffee. Aren't we in a winter storm warning like in an hour or two? Yeah, and I'm getting ready to take something off. I know, it's I'm beautiful like, oh, out yeah. here. I don't know about these weather guys. But a lot of times they say it warms up a little bit before it snows. So Ooh, the calm like, before the storm, <laughs> sorry, right? Yeah, yeah right? Uh, <laughs> Jamie and I are having a big time discussion about these overhangs right now. Big yeah. time. And what I think is going to look awesome is if these have a big slope soffit underneath instead of flat. And they're huge with like a 1 by 10 fascia, like a monster thick looking roof structure. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And that's not what we had planned. In fact, we did the gable ends with 2 by 6. Sub show. Dude, two by six out. Two by six is out. Two by eight. It's out. gonna be monster, super huge looking. I think it's gonna look awesome, and it's gonna be a little more work for us now that we just decided that. What do you think? Should we do it? Yeah, we should do it. I would do it if it was my house. It's not your house. Would you still do it? I think we still do it. Would you do it? I would, and I will, <laughs> and I'm gonna do it. That was a wood joke too, and you didn't even oh, get it. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> no, I like that. I can appreciate that. Yeah, you're in a good place right now for what I'm gonna tell you, is that we need to pack out the bottom of the fascia board that you ripped yesterday and the bottom of these outriggers that are two by six, two inches back to a two by eight. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. No, I hope you're joking. I'm not joking. I hope you're joking. I'm, what? I'm serious. What? We're, we're gonna do a slope soffit on these ends, the full two by eight thickness. Yeah, yeah. A, I don't know what you just <laughs> said. And B, it's We just like need to make these two by eights again. Jono won't even show his face. You don't know whether I'm smiling or I know you're not smiling. What do you mean, pack them out? <laughs> like, rip two by twos. Why? And because they need to be two by eights, just like our rafter tails for this overhang thing to work out, like we're thinking we're well, going to do. Well, it. it was a two by eight yesterday before I, we ripped. I know, I know. This is a big ass right now. Big ass. If you guys could take those two by eights and rip them down to No, the strips you ripped off, just nail them back on. We'll They're already through. ripped. For a short wall like this that doesn't run all the way through a room and connect to anything on the other side, you can see why there's a reason for us to need to attach it to something at yeah, the top. Yeah, give it a shake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this is a, an area for a shower. And so we actually have a critical dimension here we need to hit in the width, not only at the bottom, but at the top. And we can check this right here. And I'm just gonna confirm, I got 48 and that's a little over an eighth. That would be just fine for the shower. I'm gonna check with my plum stick. And it's actually showing I need to go over a touchy touch more. And this one can get marked off the list. <laughs> We use screws in a lot of the framing. Everybody has a pouch full of screws and we're using these GRK R4 structural grade screws. Don't just grab any old deck screw off the shelf if you're gonna use it in your framing. Be sure it is rated for structural use. Why are we selling oh, this thing? You're like so I was selling it on Marketplace and some guy found it, but he lives in Silva. And so I was selling it for 20 bucks. He said, if the crew signs it, he'll give me 25. What for if the crew signs it and we put it on YouTube, uh, signing it? Will he give you 30? I don't know. <laughs> I, told him. I don't know. I said, I have to reach 40. out to him. Make it 40. I have to reach out to him. Right. Does that mean each of our signatures is worth $1? <laughs> yep. Yeah. We're $1 famous, boys. Oh, I can't believe Night. it. Crew or... That's not a signature. That's well, neither more of these. It's all right. right. It don't matter. Do you think signature? <laughs> What in the are you? That, man. What do we have doctors on our crew now? I'm pretty sure he's gonna want his five bucks back now. <laughs> let, let's see if I get a piece. He's gonna make me pay well, to take like, it. <laughs> he's like, oh, how about you give me ten and I'll take it off your hands yeah. for you? That's um, that's my signature. It uh, is though, isn't it? You've seen me sign stuff. Yeah, we'll sign this Dr. Turn Perkins. Turn. Yep. We've got our zip system sheathing up to diagonally brace this wall from doing that number before putting the roof on, and that's pretty important, or we like to do it first anyway, because 
until you do that, the whole roof like kind of feels, ooh, ooh. It is a and little I've, wiggly. I've seen houses under construction, like pictures of them on social media, that have done this thing when you have the roof sheathing on, yep. and it's like a big sail, <clears throat> but not wall sheathing. They just like twist and just collapse it in, totally could. in storms. I've seen like bad ones, so it's always a great idea to get you know the, your wall sheathing up. I mean, first. keep the horse in front of the carriage. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Wow. Wow. That right? Was... <laughs> I mean, I'm right or right. <laughs> right, right, right okay. Right, right, right. So yeah, let's uh, let's clip the tails and get going on the roof. All right. You're gonna All right. this. Welcome to my uh, my office here. We gotta draw this rafter tail. Okay, let's say that's your rafter tail, right? There it is. Now, the thing about it is it's sloped, right? So when you put a fascia board on square, your plywood is gonna hit here. You're no what? good. OSB. OSB. Okay. Now, and if you put that square on the bottom and it hangs down a tiny bit, then you gotta chisel that off because right. we're gonna put osb on the bottom and it can't be gappy there what i really want is a um wash. new yeah. paint job what i really <laughs> want is a fascia a board acetone. that does that yeah that's what yeah. i want you yeah. see is that a rhombus i don't yeah, know but yeah that's gram. ideal i'm, I'm with you that's ideal that's parallel ideal yeah, everybody gram. likes it because then you got a flat nailing surface for the top and the bottom see right. that mm -hmm. oh it's so nice now the problem is how do you get this piece of wood because <clears throat> this is a two by eight if you make this out of a two by eight, it's not wide enough. It's not wide enough, but I just had the most brilliant I don't idea. Know if I want to hear this, you take a two by eight, okay? You rip it in the middle on the angle, and then you and then you flip them apart, and, and you gap put gap one on the top and one on the bottom, and they'll be that about make it the right size. It no, it makes it any middle. size. Who cares? Just it makes it the just, top and the bottom. Oh, you just gap the. They'll, the they'll either be tight. Or there'll be a tiny gap in between them. But it doesn't really matter. It won't matter yeah, at all. It'd be, in fact, you can have it perfect. Too. <laughs> wow, that's, that is pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't coming off. Yeah, dude. Cast on. nail our fascia board to this rafter we're gonna sight the fly rafter make sure it's straight because these are all connected together with these outriggers so if i nail this one i can't adjust the in one later jamie's on the ground where he was hey are you sighting this for us yeah yeah no we're just okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> jamie's gonna sight it and let me know when i got it straight and then we're gonna shoot it so i'm gonna clamp it in Great tool to have on the job site, by the way, a bar clamp. You can get a lot of stuff. Is that good? Yeah, there's, we're going to have to push out in the middle, but that's it. Nice. That was good. That was real good. There's our double fascia board that's flush on the top and flush on the bottom Dude, that, we, and we have never done idea. that that's a pretty not good idea. in 25 years have we ever done that that's pretty banging uh so that'll make it really easy to do the sheathing on oh, top and i mean the, i mentioned this last time we built the you? house i did but you guys thought it was a stupid idea so you didn't do it <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if that's true <laughs> It's pouring rain again, and we learned our lesson, I think, from last time we tried to stay and work in the rain. So we're going to get out of here. Yeah. And we'll pick it up. I mean, I don't uh, think it's going to rain. No, it's definitely going to rain. It is raining. And then it's going to start snowing, so. Yeah. Let's pause for a quick word from our sponsor, Masterworks.io, before we get into the next day of building our roof. One word you've probably been hearing a lot of lately is the word inflation. Central banks have been printing money like crazy and has led to a 6.8% increase in costs in the U.S. alone, a 39-year high. Now, the usual way to hedge against inflation is to invest in gold or stocks or real estate, 
but there's other new options and one very interesting one is art. Here's a fun statistic. Art prices have outpaced the S&P 500 by 174% from 1995 to 2020, and that's according to public data. Now these are staggering numbers, but the art market is currently valued at $1.7 trillion, and Deloitte estimates that it could grow by another 900 billion before 2026. So how would a person like you or me invest with their portfolio in a Picasso or a Warhol artwork when they cost millions of dollars? That's where Masterworks comes in. Their mission is to make it possible for anyone to invest in great works of art through fractional shares. With Masterworks, you can co-own exclusive pieces of art that help to protect you from inflation and even make a significant return. For example, they returned 32% on their investors in 2020 and 31% in 2021. Getting started with Masterworks is super easy. It just takes a few clicks. You visit their website, create an account, browse their artwork, and you can diversify your portfolio with one of the most stable assets around. So if you want to take advantage and start investing in fine artwork, there is a wait list, but you can skip the wait list and start investing immediately if you click the link in my description. And it also helps our channel, so go ahead and check it out. And as always, with anything related with investments, tread carefully, nothing is risk-free. Back on the job, we're gonna finish first row and then we're gonna get on this roof. Can't wait. We got a fresh face on the job site. Yes, yes. This is Porter and he is a fifth year architecture student mm -hmm. at UT. Pro balls! There Pro it balls. was! <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be telling us all the design mistakes <laughs> that we made. That'll be fun. I'm sorry, that we you made. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. All right, whatever. It's not, but it's not a big deal. Let me ask you this. Do you know how to work an iPhone? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, good. You're the new camera guy. Awesome. I got to brag on this Zip System roof sheathing. One of the great things about it is that when you put some sheets up and then it starts pouring rain and you leave, and this is sitting exposed in the rain all weekend, it doesn't hurt it. Nothing. So, right. So if we'd have put up just like a sheet of OSB and didn't get some underlayment on it, and then it poured rain all weekend like it did, the thing would be all swollen up and lambed and jagged and nasty <laughs> so that's a really nice thing about this is you know water doesn't hurt it basically first job site toss harness coming up oh, oh! how you feeling i don't know i think i got the woman's version of this freaking <laughs> harness <laughs> it feels like a thong how do you know what a thong feels like like <laughs> okay, I mean, just, cut. I'm just guessing. <laughs> the way we're getting this zip roof sheathing up on the roof surface is kind of like a five man operation. That's because we don't own a lull or any kind of machine that would lift it all the way up. So we just have to lift it like halfway or a third of the way, then another bit of the way, and then we grab it and we're roped in and these ropes are getting all in our way. So this is basically a slow process um, doing the roof sheathing because of all those different things. If we had a machine, could be easier but then we so, would have like an eighty thousand dollar machine that we only use like two or three days per job but if anybody out there owns a lull system and would like to sponsor us and <laughs> give us one <laughs> we'll use it anytime we want this worked with with a couple of tumble tiles <laughs> baby tumble 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 tiles. Tiles called us and it was awesome <laughs> If you're interested in more detail, some of you really are interested in the building stuff. Uh, one thing is we're not using H-clips, which are this little metal piece that slides over your sheathing on the bottom and on the top to align them uh, between your rafters. We're using 5 8 structural sheathing here and our rafters are 19.2 center, so we don't need that to align these or keep them stiff between the rafters. Another thing is if we have a missing edge somewhere on a rafter like this guy has that missing edge, we're gonna nail a two by four to the side of that as, as a nailer to give the edge of this sheathing somewhere a little bit better to bear on. Once we tape these seams with the zip tape and roll it, that's it. Like the shingles just go on that. For this climate zone and this roof pitch, there may be other certain exceptions somewhere, but pretty much we're dry immediately, which is great. But yeah. it's really easy, it's really fast. Just in full disclosure, uh, Zip System and Huber are our sponsors. So they provided us with this zip tape and the boards are putting down, which we're very appreciative of. We love this system. 
Thanks again, guys. One other thing I want to check out here because you might have questions about it. How does this not leak? Because there's there's just exposed nails. And the reason is water follows the path of least resistance, which is off of this roof. So I've never had a problem with water leaking through exposed fasteners like that. Now, if this was a completely flat surface, yes, maybe it would work its way through. But on a pitched roof, I've really never had that problem. All right, Porter. Big toss. Yeah! Yes! That's what I'm talking about! That side's done. What's next? Just go start working our way down from the top down from here? Yeah. <laughs> no. We gotta scaffold up and clip all those rafter tails, sheath up the wall, the whole thing we just did again. Oh my gosh, that's so repetitive. <laughs> Can I be completely honest with you right now? Yes, sir. I feel like we were working a little faster than we usually do, just to maybe show off <laughs> because you're an architect. I felt like I needed to tell you that. Yeah, can you not do that anymore? Wow. Arlo had the big reach on that one. Wow, two in a row. Are you just yeah, showing off now? Him. You knew what the measurement was. <laughs> that thing. So a little <laughs> update here. We're going crazy on this wall sheathing, but Arlo got here. He had a doctor's appointment this morning. But hey, now, glad you could show up, buddy. <laughs> he's going around and getting this whole section of the house ready for the roof by doing the layout for the ceiling joists and the rafters and the beam that's going to hold up the ceiling joists. So this roof is going to tee in to that wall this way. Different, different, like basically 90 degrees from that roof. And that'll cover this whole master bedroom area. Wow, we didn't have much extra there. No. Four that's inches why, extra on that's that. That's why I just double checked it twice. I was like. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm double checking this too. Uh, and especially on something like this where you go. Uh, you only got one yeah, board. You, yeah, you got, you got it. You're not like you're, doing. you're not faking this together. <laughs> What's going on? Is it just me or are these the world's shortest sawhorses <laughs> I've ever seen? Look, look I, at, they're not even to your knee. I, what is going on? These little ponies right here, I'm telling you what, they're the best. Well, they are short, yeah. So what happened is we were laying out the lines on our OSB for the rafter spacing. Good job on OSB, by the way. Because we, I know, I had to, you see how I paused to think about it. <laughs> we're doing a 19.2 spacing on the roof. It's a little bit odd, so we had to mark our marks. And it's hard to reach all the way across a four-foot sheet and mark your lines when the horses are tall. And I thought, well, these have been around a while. Why not just saw the legs off of them? And, you know, I'll have a nice low set, see, for <laughs> marking. And who Do knows? they work good? Oh, it's, it's awesome. Yes, yeah, the best thing ever. So, so throw a tape on that um, if anybody's wondering. Mm -hmm. What's the perfect height for marking across well, OSB? I think, I think a good height here, we're looking at 25. 25. And 25. Jamie's saying he liked it. <clears throat> I mean, Jason could even reach across it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's not even here oh, to hear man. that. Dang it. We'll, we'll do it again here in a minute. When I, got, I got him with a short joke. He wasn't even here. No, I think... I Jamie trying to ride that horse. <laughs> no, no, no. We can't go there. But, uh, I, hey, I like it. Now, I will say we have about six or eight sets of horses laying around. Oh, there he is. So... got a demonstration set up here here's the end of my chalk line i've got it run directly under this line we've already marked you can see on all of our rafter tails and i'm going to show you why it's important to snap the chalk line from near the end of the chalk line i'm going to snap it in the middle right now and i'm kind of do a mistake on purpose i'm going to pull it kind of to the side a little when i snap it and i'm going to let it go and you can see that the new chalk line is like a quarter inch from our straight chalk line. So the momentum of the string when I let it go, made it go that way. And, and I've seen a lot of people get crooked stuff. The better way to do it would be to snap it down near the end. Like there's the end right here. Snap it there. And it, it can't get that angular momentum going to chalk the wrong place. Sorry guys. It's okay. like, I love this stuff. We only had to do it twice. <laughs>
there three or four times. Are all wrong that we did? No, the first one's all right. <laughs> We're trimming a few of these rafters, and I got a pretty cool pro tip, I think, for marking a parallel line to a cut like this. Just going to use your hand as a guide, and I'm just going to use the end of my finger as a guide and do a straight pencil line, and you can make a pretty parallel line pretty easily. So I'm just running the board on my finger and keeping the pencil the same in my hand, and that's it. I don't want to cut that one, though, so... Scribble it out. Hey, can you see that? Oh, I can. <laughs> oh my gosh. Luckily, we're cutting off most of the end of that. But man, this thing is like a crazy rocking chair leg. It looks like it's meant for a Japanese roof. <laughs> yeah, that'd be sweet. Yep. Like that? It's good. Three o'clock. Can we get this done? That's a bald eagle. No, it's got a white head and a white tail. Do you, you saw feet, the American flag on him? His feet had an American flag on the bottom. <laughs> he, had a, he had a claw full of arrows and a snake in the other. <laughs> this is uh, great and all, but... Um, is that how we're getting we down? Have a ladder, it depends but... on how much of a raise you want to give me. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I see. Jason's uh... going to do, do a trust fall on Ray. <laughs>